Hello, my name is Elizabeth Cutting. I am a nutritionist and health coach, and I'm making a recording today on the immune system and how to support it and boost it so that it's up to working at its optimum level. I'm making this recording as part of the Healthy You program. Your immune system is your body's defense against invasion by bacteria, viruses and other microbes that can cause us damage. It's a very intelligent system. It decides what is hostile and takes appropriate action to protect the body from harm. It's also a system that is responsible for repairing any damage to the body. For example, if we get a cut or um, on the skin or we damage some bones or other tissues in the body, the immune system repairs, um, repairs that. We are able to mount a very powerful immune response when required, which will trigger um, inflammation while the, uh, the damage is being repaired. This inflammation will drive the immune response and, rep and send out cells that will repair the damage in the right area. So the immune system has to recognise where the damage is, produces all the immune response cells, send it to the, the area. There will be some inflammation in that area while it's repairing the damage. And then once the damage is repaired, everything goes back to normal again. This inbuilt automatic immune system is called our innate immune system. It's always um, in the background on, on duty 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So it's just there in the background all the time waiting to repair anything, that, any damage to the body. The innate um, immune system works alongside another very powerful immune system called the adaptive immune system. This simply means this part of our immune system learns to adapt to new threats and dangers and creates a tailor-made response to deal with it. For example, we may encounter a new virus or a new bacteria that the body has never encountered before. If these viruses or bacteria ever return, the adaptive immune system will remember how to react to them and will immediately deal with them a lot faster. So the adaptive immune system is constantly learning and remembering how to respond to things. It's a very powerful um, part of our immune system. It just takes a little longer to, um, to trigger a reaction. So our immune system can be affected by many things. The food we eat may not nourish it correctly or we may not be absorbing nutrients as well as we should. So um, we may not um, consume foods um, which are rich in vitamins that we need for our functioning immune system, such as vitamin C, zinc, vitamin A, vitamin D, and many other nutrients that are key to a healthy functioning immune system. We may also have a, a lack of antioxidant containing foods in our diet. Now these are found in fruits and vegetables, um, nuts, unsalted whole nuts uh, and seeds such as pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, um, linseeds or flaxseed is another name for it. These are all very important antioxidant containing foods which are really important for our immune system. Just to quickly explain what antioxidants are, they are um, substances contained in the foods that I've just mentioned which help to stabilize any um, so other dangerous substances in the body. Um, so they're a really important part of our immune system and it's why 
health professionals emphasize the importance of eating fruits and vegetables because of these powerful antioxidant containing compounds which neutralize things like they're called free radicals. They're damaging compounds that we can get from lots of different things, but I'll talk about that in a moment. Sometimes as well, um, eating certain foods can trigger, um, can affect us in a negative way and trigger an immune response. Um, I'm particularly thinking of things like wheat or dairy, which uh, for some people it can trigger a response in the body, which is the immune system reacting to wheat and dairy because some people can't tolerate it very well. So when they eat them, um, it triggers a response in the immune system. Um, some of you may have experienced that with, with wheat or dairy and experienced bloating or having to run to the toilet quite a bit because it's, it's, your body's just not reacting to it in, in a normal way. Another thing that can um, affect our immune system is stress and our lifestyle choices. These, these can have a huge impact on our immune system, both of which can reduce our um, immunity and drive an excessive immune response. Our gut health is also an important factor in ensuring our immune system function it functions correctly, as the gut is responsible for producing beneficial microbes that play an important part in a well-functioning immune system. These um, these things are called uh, short chain fatty acids and they are produced if our diet is really good and our gut health is working at an optimum level. We produce short chain fatty acids if we have a diet rich in fiber as well. So it's really important to think about what you're eating every day because everything we put in our mouths has an impact on the body and particularly on the immune system. So let's look at what happens when the body responds, and when our immune system is triggered. So when the body responds to an, an invader from outside, whether it's bacteria or, or some other type of infection or virus or injury, the body the body's response creates um, a temporary inflammation. Um, this will this is part of the healing process um, and it is a perfectly normal process. It lasts maybe for a few days until the problem has been resolved and it is necessary for um, the immune system to be able to work efficiently. So that 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 type of inflammation is is very um, is very normal. You will have experienced it yourself if you've you know, hurt yourself or twisted your ankle or pulled a muscle, the area will feel hot um, and uncomfortable for a few days and then it will subside and return to normal. However, things only become damaging if the inflammation uh, triggered by the immune res response becomes chronic, continues for weeks, months or indefinitely. This type of long term systemic inflammation causes a lot of damage to the body and will need to be investigated as to the root cause. You can um, uh, test with a, if you have a blood test done, there are certain markers in the blood that will indicate whether you have systemic um, inflammation in the body. Um, this is CRP and ESR. These are these come up on, on blood tests and it is a marker for inflammation. So if you have that chronically for a long time, then um, the doctor will maybe investigate that. So what causes this um, our body's immune system to produce this type of systemic inflammation? Um, well, there's a number of things that can trigger it. A mechanical injury, such as you know a break or a fracture, can trigger this inflammation, inflammatory response. Um, environmental toxins are also um, a trigger for inflammation. So that could be pollution, smoke, mold, damp. 
um, sprays in the house, um, sprays on furniture, anything, anything chemical um, that c- it can cause the body to trigger an immune, immune response. But the biggest influence on our immune system is our diet and our lifestyle. So let's have a look at each of these things in a bit more detail. Damage to the body, such as a break or a fracture or a cut, um, will normally heal fairly quickly, uh, depending on the severity of the damage. And the immune system is part of that healing process. You may have to take painkillers or other other medication while your body is repairing that uh, just to be able to, um, you know, be comfortable and not, be, you know, being able to sleep. But it normally will pass after a few days or weeks, depending on the severity of it. Environmental toxins are a different um, uh, substance that can cause a lot of immune type responses which we may not even be aware of. So when I talk about environmental toxins I'm thinking um, about synthetic um, chemicals that we are exposed to like cleaning chemicals, pollution, cigarette smoke and things like food additives, um, preservatives, pesticides, colorings and flavorings. you know, if you look at the um, ingredients on some of the highly processed foods, there are an awful lot of things in there that we don't recognize as being natural. These can all trigger a re- an immune response. Um, some people are more susceptible to them than others, but these I would consider to be environmental toxins. Um, and it, it's just something that you need to be aware of. Also, if you are eating a lot of um, highly processed uh, foods containing a high amount of sugar or a high amount of damaging fats, um, fats come in two categories. There's damaging fats and there's very healthy, nourishing fats. But if your diet is very high in some of these highly processed, sugary, um, damaging fats, that can certainly lead to inflammation. So diet is a hugely important element in um, sustaining um, a functioning, healthy immune system. So how do we ensure that our immune system is functioning as well as it possibly can to to avoid the effects of long-term chronic inflammation in the body? Perhaps the most important recommendation is to focus on foods that may help address gastrointestinal imbalances. There is now a vast amount of research showing that um, that what we eat has a direct impact on our immune system and how well it functions. So making sure we concentrate on our diet and include foods that are beneficial to our gut health and hence our immune system. So let's take a look at these in more detail and try and understand what we should concentrate on if we want to maximize our immune system and help to prevent the long-term effects of inflammation. I'm sure you've all heard of probiotics. And looking at foods that are rich in probiotics is a very good start. Probiotics contain good bacteria, which improve our gut health. So things like yogurt, sauerkraut, um, kefir, which you can now get in most um, supermarkets, and even sourdough bread. These all contain probiotics, which will absolutely improve your gut health and ensure that your immune system is um, nourished with the right foods. The other foods that are important are prebiotics. These prebiotics feed the good gut bacteria that we have in our guts. Things like um, onions, 
garlic, leeks, asparagus. These are rich in um, particular bacteria, which are which really our gut absolutely loves. You may not know this, but there is a direct link um, now between our gut and our brain. It's called the vagus nerve. Um, and this was only discovered about 20 years ago, but it has become really important. So having a having good gut health um, can make such a difference to a lot of different systems in our body, but particularly our immune system. Other foods that are important are foods that are rich in vitamin A. Um, these can be found in liver and eggs. Foods that are rich in vitamin D, um, such as oily fish, shellfish, egg yolks. Um, you can now buy mushrooms that have been grown under ultraviolet light, um, which increases the amount of vitamin D that they contain. And you can also buy some fortified foods that have added vitamin D. Um, so during the summer, vitamin D um, is not generally a problem if your skin is exposed to the sunlight. But during the winter, uh, you might want to concentrate more on these foods and ensure that you have plenty in your diet to maximise your vitamin D levels. And lastly, making sure that you have a good intake of fruits and vegetables and try and vary the um, the type of foods that you're eating. Um, I think we, we all tend to eat much the same things every week, but do try and include some different foods. Um, or try and eat what we call a rainbow of colours. There's lots of different colours in the fruits and vegetables. There's reds, there's greens, there's yellow, there's orange, there's purple. Each of these um, compounds that give the particular fruit and vegetable their, their distinctive colour contain very powerful antioxidants as well as a range of other important substances. So do try and ensure that your diet contains lots of these foods every day and try and vary what you're eating during the week. Vitamin C is, of course, extremely important um, as vitamin C plays a huge role in, in your immune system, as well as lots of other, other uh, chemical processes in the body. Um, if you're getting a good intake of fruits and vegetables, you will get plenty of vitamin C. Um, so I mean, oranges, berries, kiwi fruits, um, they, these contain lots of um, vitamin C, but m most vegetables and fruits will contain some. But dark green vegetables are important. Um, even a red pepper contains as much vitamin C as um, a piece of fruit. So do get a, a good range of fruit and vegetables in your diet. So what should you not eat? What sort of things can damage your immune system or make it work at a less optimum level? So eating highly processed foods, um, which contain a lot of preservatives and colorings and emulsifiers, um, sugar and um, damaging fats. These are fats that are um, not good for the body because they trigger a response in the body. Um, when you eat these foods, these foods appear to the body as being um, an invader, an outside chemical that the body doesn't recognize as being natural. So when you eat these foods, your body does mount an, a, an immune response against them and tries to neutralize them. Antioxidants play a big role in neutralizing these chemicals. So that's why it's important to have lots of antioxidant containing foods in your diet. But the most sensible thing to do is to try and reduce the amount of highly processed foods that you consume every day. Even if you just cut them down, it's difficult, I know, to avoid them. They're in everything. You have to be really vigilant. But the more you can avoid them, um, the more the more your robust your immune system will become. Try and focus on foods that will boost your immune system and nourish your body. That way you can ensure that your immune system is working at 
at its most optimum level and protecting you, particularly during the winter months when we have so many bugs um, going around and people coughing and sneezing. It's very easy to pick up things. Um, if you do catch something, eating foods that are very high in vitamin C or getting some vitamin C um, lozenges that you can dissolve in water. If you take those over a few days, that can help to reduce this, the length and severity of a cold. But do try and avoid the things that you know will damage the body, such as the processed foods I've just been talking about. So maybe keep a food diary for a week and think about what you are eating and look at maybe cutting out one or two things that you um, recognize maybe might be causing some damage to the body or causing an inflammatory response. So I hope this has given you um, a brief outline of the immune system, um, what it does in the body and how best to support it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this recording and I um, I will be recording further um, sessions at another date. Okay, goodbye for now.